welcome to our lecture on the male reproductive tract. And in this presentation, we are going to focus on the pool. This presentation was adapted with permission from the lecture of Dr. John J. Parrish, a professor of reproductive physiology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. At the end of this lecture, students would be able to describe the male reproductive tract system in the pool in terms of its anatomy and physiology. So the male reproductive tract is composed of various structures, and we are going to start with the testes. So what is the function of the testes? The main function of the testes is to produce the spermatozoa. And uh, when we are going to put an analogy to the testes, so the testes is analogous to a factory. A factory has lots of equipment within it, and a factory produces an output. The output of the testes is the spermatozoa. So, just like a factory, the equipment within the factory must be functioning well in order to produce an output. So, in the testes, the, the different parts or the different structures in the testes must be functioning well also in order to produce the spermatozoa. So, therefore, just like a factory which must be air conditioned, the testes also must have a cooling mechanism in order to successfully achieve spermatogenesis or the formation of sperm. This is true not only for, of course, for the bull, but also in most mammals. So the testes need a cooling mechanism. It has a very high metabolic rate no? and uh, the testes now is one of the tissues in the body with the highest metabolic rate. So again the, the major function of the testes is, is to produce the sperm. It is a site where the assembly of the sperm take place. So it has a specialized cooling mechanism that is required for spermatogenesis. So the next part of the male reproductive tract is the epididymis. So from the testes, where the sperm is produced, the sperm will move into the epididymis. So we could think of the epididymis as the finishing school. So when uh, we, we make an analogy to the testes as a factory of the sperm, for the epididymis, it is considered to be, it is analogous to a, a finishing school. Why is this so? So the epididymis is a site where uh, a lot of changes in the sperm take place. And this is important in order to prepare the sperm for fertilization. So for example, you know, there are changes in the sperm membrane. There are also changes in the nucleus as well as in the flagellum of the sperm to stabilize the sperm. There is also the changes in the motility and the fertility as well as in the translocation of the cytoplasmic droplets. So these changes are all important. Now these modifications are all impo important in order for the sperm to be functional and to be capable of fertilization. So basically, you know, the most uh, important or the fundamental function of the epididymis is the transportation of spermatozoa, delivering them from the testicles to the lower parts of the male reproductive tract. So this, no, this is the the of course no, the, the, the most important function of the epididymis. Uh, when we say epididymis, of course, it has three parts. Now we have the head or the caput of the epididymis. We also have the body or the corpus of the epididymis and the tail of the epididymis. So from the head or the caput of the epididymis, the sperm will travel to the body. Then it, it will move down to the tail or the coda of the epididymis. So what is the function of this tail of the epididymis? So the tail is analogous to a warehouse. This is a site where the sperm is stored 
and later ejaculated. And they store sperm for multiple ejaculates. So the tail of the epididymis no, can store sperm for about 5 to 10 ejaculates. Smooth muscle contractions from this area will facilitate the movement of the sperm out of the epididymis to the vas deferens to eventually mix with the accessory sex glands or the, gland, the fluids from the accessory sex glands. The purpose of this is to add metabolic substrates, modify the surface of the sperm, and also serve to transport the sperm out of the male reproductive tract. So from the tail of the epididymis, which serves as a warehouse and delivery system, the sperm will again be transported to the accessory sex glands for the addition of uh, the metabolic, uh, metabolic fluids or the substrates or the semen. After that, the sperm will then be transported or it will then get be uh, transported into the penis which is the delivery system. So it serves as the delivery system of the semen. So the penis must undergo erection, protrusion, and then ejaculation for the sperm not to be uh, transported to the female reproductive tract. This is the uh, bull reproductive tract showing its three major parts. Now we have here the testes, the pelvic tract, and the penis. So uh, we have here the testes at the bottom. Uh, the scrotum in this uh, specimen is removed. And at the top part, we have the pelvic portion of the tract. And in this part, the sperm will move out via the pelvic portion of the tract. So when ejaculated, the sperm then moves into the penis. This is the schematic diagram of the reproductive organs of the bull. This is a schematic diagram. The testes is uh, located at the bottom. And of course, the testes is considered to be the primary sex organ of the males. Its main function is to produce both the sperm and the male sex hormone, testosterone. So we have here a quiz and a recap of our lesson. So what are the two major functions of the testes? So the, the testes is surrounded by a skin, and that skin is known as the scrotum. The scrotum is a very important structure because it encloses the testes, it keeps the testes away from the body wall, and it acts as a thermosensor. Thermosensor in the sense that the testes is about 3 to 5 degrees centigrade cooler than the body wall. Hence, you know, for spermatogenesis to occur properly, the scrotum serves as a sensor for the temperature. Another function of the scrotum is that it serves as a radiator. So there will be some sweat occurring in some species. And then there is this what we call evaporative cooling, wherein there can also be air moving across the testes. So that is a mechanism for the evaporative cooling of the testes. It basically allows cooling to occur and another function of the testes is that it is considered to be a protective sac. This is the ball testes now showing the different layers of the serous membranes that encloses the testes. If we are going to remove the scrotum, so in this part here, now the scrotum is removed, we will be able to uh, cut down into the testes. And we have these uh, serous membranes that encloses the uh, testes. So we have here the uh, binet, no, the scrotum, is a serous membrane known as the tunica vaginalis, no, particularly the parietal vaginal tunic or the parietal tunica vaginalis. So if you're going to cut down into it, so beneath that, uh, we have the visceral tunica vaginalis. And uh, under that, 
cutting under the method of tunica vaginalis is the tunica albuginea. This is a diagram of the male reproductive tract you know, showing how we're going to produce a cross section and a longitudinal section. So if we're going to cut you now the for example the test as uh, longitudinally, so you can produce this uh, longitudinal section and transversely you can produce the cross section. This is a cross section of a scrotum uh, showing the different layers of uh, serous membranes and connective tissue that encloses the testes. So starting from the outside, outermost part, you know, the, we have here the a solid you know, black line. And uh, this is the scrotum or the scrotal skin. Uh, just underneath the, this black line, the scrotum, is we have here an orange, uh, reddish-orange line. And this is the tunica dartus muscle. So this is, this is just below you know, the scrotum. Beneath the tunica dartus muscle is the purple color line. This one here. And this is the parietal vaginal tunic. So, notice that each testis has one layer or one uh, parietal vaginal tunic that encloses it. So, we have here on the left testis, we have uh, the parietal vaginal tunic. We also have another parietal vaginal tunic that encloses the, the right testis. So, under the uh, parietal vaginal tunic. Now we have here a uh, thin black line and this is the visceral vaginal tunic. And under the visceral vaginal tunic is the tunica albuginea. So this is the thick black line here. So we describe a tunica albuginea as a thick no, connective tissue over the surface of the uh, testes. Uh, of course, uh, in the female, we also have the tunica albuginea in the ovary, and the the tunica albuginea also encloses the parenchyma of the uh, ovary. So the tunica albuginea in the testes also sends a connective tissue down into the core of the testes to meet into the mediastinum. So the tissue of the testes is somewhat flaccid. So when, you, when we are going to examine you know, the specimen of the testes, it is somewhat flaccid. And this is and this tunica albuginea connective tissue will come down from here, you know, from the surface of the uh, testes, the tunica albuginea will come down towards the mediastinum of the, of the testes, now resembling a branches of tree, supporting the structure of the testes. So the core is represented by the mediastinum, and the mediastinum is made up of connective tissue with some ducts within it. If we are going to cut the testes longitudinally, we'll be able to see you know, that the outer portion of the testes is represented by the testicular parenchyma and at the center we have the mediastinum. So in this uh, specimen, we also can see you know, the, the tail of the epididymis or also known as the coda of the epididymis and also the caput of the epididymis or the head of the epididymis. So this uh, diagram shows the structure of the testes, particularly its tubular structures. We'll start with the seminiferous tubules. Of course, the, the seminiferous tubules, it is where the spermatogenesis occur, or it is where the sperm are produced. So these tubes begin and end at the reta testes. The reta testes is a series of tubes that are located or buried within the mediastinum of the testes. So when the sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules, they move out into the reta testes before, and then 
from it that they will loop up to the other parts of the testes such as the vasa efferentia. So aside from this uh, tubular structures, we can also see here the tunica albuginia. So this is a diagram of the testes now indicating that the uh, the seminiferous tubules begin and end at the retetestes. So this portion here is the retetestes. It is uh, again found in the mediastinum. And we also have here, of course, these are the seminiferous tubules where the sperm are produced. So uh, these uh, seminiferous tubules are considered to be very long. And in the book, for example, its length is probably several miles of, several miles of seminiferous tubules. So going back you know, to the journey of the sperm and the testes, so of course the sperm are being produced in the seminiferous tubules. It goes into the reta testis in the mediastinum and from the mediastinum it moves into the uh, other parts or other segments of the testis. From the reta testis, the sperm then move to the vasa efferentia. So this portion here is represented by the vasa efferentia. There are about 6 to 12 tubules in this area, and it somehow functions as a collecting duct. The sperm then move into the epididymis. So this portion here you know, is the entire structure of the epididymis, which is a single tube. Now, and the tube is characteristically very convoluted in structure, as you can see here in this figure. Of course, it is three parts. The sperm will enter the caput of the epididymis or the head. Then the sperm will move down into the corpus or the body of the epididymis and into the coda of the epididymis where the sperm are stored. So during ejaculation, there will be some muscle contractions and the sperm will be moving up into the vas deferens. As you can see here, this is the vas deferens which is uh, on the, up, this, the upside of the diagram and the sperm will move up to the spermat spermatic cord back into the internal portion of the male reproductive tract. So of course, this portion here is on the outside of the animal and uh, when the, sp the sperm will move into the spermatic cord, of course, it will go back you know, into the internal portion of the reproductive tract. In summary, the sperm are produced in the seminiferous tubules. They move out into the retetestes. Then they move up through the retetestes to the vas uh, efferentia or the efferent duct at the top and then to the caput of the epididymis, to the body of the epididymis and to the coda or the tail of the epididymis where it is stored. At ejaculations, muscle contractions will move the sperm up through the vas deferens or to the ductus deferens and up to the rest of the male reproductive tract. So we have also here in the male, uh, in the male animals or in humans, there is uh, this what we call vasectomy. So basically in the vasectomy, you cut the male cords, particularly the vas deferens and the vas deferens is tied at both at the ends so that it will not heal and go back. So this is uh, a procedure in man in order to prevent you know, the in order to prevent uh, fertilization or in order to prevent pregnancy. So this is a contraceptive method in humans. So these questions are a short review of our uh, lecture. Number one uh, question is what are the sperm are produced? in what structure within the testes? And the second question is, where are the sperm stored in the male reproductive tract?